Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jesse and Kathy DePlantis. We're in the boardroom again yes. to talk to you today, and we have an announcement. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Guess what? We are going to have church this Sunday, Yay. physical church, and it's going to be a blessing of Let's the Lord. Let's have church. So I want to say this. I want you to get rid of them dirty pajamas you had, <laughs> had on all this time. Wash them suckers. Don't bring them to church. No. And put on some good clothes that smell good, look good, shout good, because we starting to have church there at Covenant. Isn't that a blessing? Yeah, a lot of churches around the nation are already open up and we're going to be one of them. We believe in that. Hallelujah. I believe the lockdown, that stuff's got to go. And we already done, uh, we done bound the virus in the name of Jesus. And we're not believing for a second return, no. like some people say, you no. know. No, we, we don't deny what's going on in the world. We just deny it's right. And God's word is so true. So thank you for tuning in today. And God's going to richly bless you. Kathy's got some great testimonies yes. of people that have Several watched this year and the other things that I preach on other platforms. And I'd like you to start with the, uh, why don't you, let's start with that. Then I want to read a scripture I believe the Lord's having okay. me say. So give me a good testimony of what's going on. Now, these are things people say, not what we say. This is came from you, you that right. are watching, see? So you got to understand. So it's good for people to know uh, people's testimonies. Kathy calls them on our TV uh, uh, program, Glorious Moments. That's right. And it's so true. So give us one right now. Yeah, Mom. and I'm thankful that y'all, I hope y'all going to write more comments in because we love Amen. sharing sure, them. We love to read them. I catch Jesse going through my, you know, he doesn't have an iPhone. I don't have a phone. Let he me just say, I got to explain iPhone. that. Since you brought it up, I don't carry a phone. I want a little peace in my life. I let Car Kathy carry the phone. And if I want to know something, I just look at her phone. So he's constantly asking me, is there anything I need to know? And, and is there any <laughs> messages? And then he'll grab it and he goes through and he'll read the comments. She don't think I can handle it. Listen, I was, gets, I was on the earth three years before she got he here. He gets so blessed. <laughs> I get so blessed when you write in. Thank you so much Thank for that. You. Let me share some that have written in. Just Come on, maybe Mama. just one to start off with. Give us a good one. This one says, uh, from Sylvie, I watched your series, A Merry Heart Does Good Like a Medicine, and suddenly the bone of my arm straightened up. Thank you, Jesus. And I tell you what, that, that, it wasn't because of me, but the Bible said a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Yeah, yeah. And God just kicked in. And some people say, I don't believe that. She does. Mm -hmm. She does. does. She got it. Glory to God. See, what you don't believe, you will never receive. Yeah. What you do believe, you will receive. It's just that simple. Give me Jesse, another one. Here, too. A lot of people may not realize that a lot mm -hmm. of these great messages, the merry heart, plus some great sermons that mm -hmm. you preached over the years, our staff has been gathering yeah. together and populating them on our YouTube channel. So be sure and, to subscribe. Yeah. You won't miss on, any of them. And also, didn't what? we do something um, on. Um, uh, Total JDM that you opened that up or something? Yeah, like? Total JDM for years has been out there, and then, but when this uh, crisis started... Explain to them what Total JDM, Total JDM is. Total JDM is a collection of over 200 of our messages on audio and video right. that we've had on a site that was available to, exclusively to our partners for those who gave, yes. I think it was about $20 a month, uh -huh. at, at minimum $20 a month for recurring, they could right. have access to these. And the beautiful thing about it is, is and, I, and you see me watching things on my iPad. So right. you can have it on your iPad, and if you only watched half of it, when you log in again, even on your iPhone, it remembers where you are and picks up that sermon. But well, do you have, at this time, do you have to be a partner to get it? Well, no. Actually, when this started, we, 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 we pushed that away and just made it open for everyone all through the end of, I think, through the end of May. May Praise 31st, the Lord. What a blessing it's available. God, that people have been watching. In yeah. fact, I read one comment where somebody, they were actually like binge watching. I don't Praise know if you know what that is. Yes, I, but oh, yeah. they, I've been on a few binges oh, yeah, in my life true. before that's I would say that. Yeah, that was BC, before Christ. That was Christ. before Christ, yes. And during Kathy. <laughs> and during Kathy, yes. I remember yes. those days. We don't want to go back. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> But I mean, so I, I, I'd like you to go to JDM.org and look at our website and all the kinds. Of, there's so many wonderful things out there. And it's all done with you in mind. Well, every let bit me of listen it. to the, read this one, Jesse. Okay. This one's from Miranda. She, lo she loves to just interrupt me. I he have to do that. He, her, he does it so much for, for, to me. So I want to let you know I've how taught her well, haven't I? <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Don't babe. interrupt me while okay. I'm interrupting you. I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this one's from Miranda, and it says, 17 years ago, we named our son after you. Hey. We went through every Bible name and preacher name. Name, and we came to Jesse, one of our favorite preachers. We knew that was the name for him you know, 17 years ago. And do you know what the, the name Jesse means in Hebrew? Wealthy. That's exactly what it means. Mm -hmm. And I, I ain't doing bad, I'm on my No. <laughs> God doing good. And you know, so it, that's a thing that just blows me away about people. You know, they say that prosperity stuff don't work. Well, now a lot, a lot of you are out of a job. How does it work for you? You understand yeah. what I'm saying? I don't mean that in a rude sense. Excuse me. Poverty is not a nice thing. 
Mm-hmm. Poverty has destroyed more people than anything else in the world. That's you see true. what I'm saying? And it's a curse. And I, I can't get over how blind some people are to preach that, that, that God likes that. Well, Jesus was poor. When was he poor? Would you like, I like to know when was he poor? He had 12 full-time people on his staff and some were married. He took care of them, that's right? Yeah. He had 70 part-time people that he sent out. So that's 82 people that work for the Jesus Nazareth Evangelistic Association. That's right. Who needs a boat when you can walk on the water? Mm-hmm. But he had his own personal boat. He had his own house. They gambled for his robe, which means it, must not, it, it wasn't a piece of trash. It wasn't all yeah. tore up. And when but, he was born, they well, let me finish that robe thing. People oh. don't gamble for something. When no they gamble, bags. they gamble to get something better, yeah, not, not something not less. Not dirty pajamas. Not them dirty pajamas. Yeah, <laughs> glory to God. Now think about those things. See, fed 5,000 people with a two-feast fish dinner. Went to weddings, he kind of enjoyed life. Think about that. The only time he had problems when he got around the religious crowd, but yet the people, they see, so you got to understand something about Jesus Christ. He, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when you get to heaven, I'm, I'm going to help you. Now, I'm, I'm not saying this to be critical, or I'm just saying this to be truthful. You're not going to find any poverty. You ain't going to find any of that stuff whatsoever. And the Bible says his will be done on earth, in earth, as it is in heaven. That's right. Which brings me to this. Uh, I, I was thinking about this before we were coming over. And uh, one thing I've learned about the Lord is to be a witness in my life because some, some people, the only Jesus they'll ever see in life is the Jesus in you or the Jesus in me. And I want to go to Hebrews chapter 12. If you want to turn with me, you can do it. Okay. And I want to read verse 1 and verse 2. I've had so many ministers, and I want you to listen, and people, they say it just seemed like everything that man touches, talk about me, it just prospers. Well, yes, it has, as long as you're in the will of God. You got to understand what God is calling you to do, whether it's spiritual, physical, or financial. And I love Jesus' statement, the reason why he was what he was. He said, I only say what my father says. You don't have to make it up. Just say what he says. And I only do what my father says to do. Now, I like the old King James Version Bible, and I just enjoy it uh, but, because it's so poetical. But it says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, and I want to read it. Wherefore, seeing we are also accomplished about with so great a cloud of witnesses, Notice it, not only the ones that are alive, but the ones that have already been in heaven. I believe sometimes God pulls back the curtain and lets somebody see some things. Mm. You say, oh, you can't prove that's true. You can't prove it's not. Excuse me? So great a cloud of witness. Don't forget the clouds. You see, there's a lot right. of things going on up there. I want to read it again. Wherefore, seeing we also are accomplished about it with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin. So there is sin, and there's also other things, that, uh, what are called trespasses and iniquities which so easily beset us. So what is besetting you? And it may not be sin, but it may be a weight. And, it, and watch this. And I, and I love how it, it ends. And let us run, not walk. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Hmm. Now, verse 2 is a phenomenal verse of Scripture. I've had many ministers that have built beautiful buildings and got in trouble, couldn't pay the notes. Hmm. Yeah. Now, that don't make no sense if God tell you to build a place. And then you, and you finance it and you can't pay the notes. I've had people say, God told me to buy that house. Okay, but I, I mean, I'm going to lose my house. I, and I, I don't know what I've done. I'm going to answer that today. I, I feel you need to know that kind of stuff. Because everything we've done, if you come to Jesse Plants Ministries here on the ground, you can't put your hand on anything that has a debt on it. We're totally debt free. We had a choice in it, uh, to borrow money. I'm not against that. I'm, I'm just saying that. Or we had a choice to pay it cash. So since I have that choice, I decide to go the route of, of, of being debt free. Now, why has those things worked for me? You first got to understand what did God tell you? And verse two tells you, it says, looking unto verse two, let me read it. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now what, look at me when I say that Jesus is under no responsibility to finish something he has not authored. It's true. You see, and that's a problem a lot, Kathy. A lot of people say, I want to do this, I want to do it. They want to be the biggest boy on the block. They build these, these phenomenal structures that are beautiful, but did Jesus author it? Yeah. And if he authored it, he will pay it. But he's under no responsibility to finish something he has not authored. And I've seen a lot of quote, quote, religious works, buildings, and things of that nature that Jesus did not author. Ego did. Mm. I want to be the biggest, but we're going to buy this, we're going to buy it. And not using what I call good business principles. You got to understand something about Jesus. He was Jewish. 
Jewish people are good, smart business people. You don't have any Jewish friends. You need to make some. I mean that sincerely because they can teach you some things. They have the Abraham blessing, but so do we because we are the seed of Abraham. So notice that people have said, how could you build this facility? They call it a campus here. And uh, how did you do that? Well, he authored it. That doesn't mean we didn't have trouble. That didn't mean the devil didn't fight us. In fact, one time they put a close and desist order on this property. Remember that? Cease and desist. Cease and desist, That's because we were waiting for the permit, and and our contractor was already on site. All he was doing was moving dirt around, but they thought we were actually doing construction. Yeah, we were the sheriff's office. And we had the right to move dirt around. So I had to go visit. Yeah, you had to go do people. the visit. And he said, man, I don't want to go to jail. I said, well, I'll go with you so you won't be alone. No, no. Actually, I remember it was a meeting. We were having a conference. Yeah. You and I both were going to speak in Augusta, Georgia. Uh-huh. And I couldn't go to that conference because the next day I had to go visit yeah, the, to president go vi- the, go, the president of the parish. And got it all worked out. Yes. But you see, the reason why that we built for four solid years, I'm talking almost every day, and we never had a financial deficit, uh, we never have to get on, on, on TV and, and say, oh, God, if you don't do something today, we're not going to make it. Why? Because of your faith? Well, I, hope, I believe it was some of it, but because of this statement, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. See, so God had a responsibility to finish this place because he authored mm-hmm. it. Do you see? So God always has a plan. That's right. And always. when he gives you a vision, he always brings the provision. Right. Right. He gets That's correct. Plan, plus yeah. He shows but you see, how to, to get, get the provision, you got to seek the provider. That's right. To get That's the right. healing, you got to seek the healer. Yeah. You see, a lot of people want the provision and the healing, but they don't want to. They don't want to seek the provider and the healer. Mm-hmm. And that's not a religious thing. So I ask myself every time God tells me to do a project, did Jesus author this or did I? Mm-hmm. You see, now that's a vast difference. I'm not saying you can, if you authored it that you can't build it, but it's not going to be easy. You see what I'm saying? But if remember, Jesus is behind it, it will be. Amen. I remember the first person that we had as pastor of our church when we launched it. David. Way, David Solstrand. Yeah. What a wonderful man. He's he in heaven so today. wonderful. He often said this about you. He says, Brother Jesse doesn't uh, do things and ask then later ask God to bless it. He says he finds out what Jesse's doing and then... I'll find out what God's, God's doing. God's doing, and then the blessing is on it, yeah. right? Something like you that. You see, when I do something, there's a scripture in the Bible that said, count the cost before you build the tower. So the first thing I did, I got a hold of a, uh, on this facility, I got a hold of architects, got a hold of a contractor, and had them do the blueprints, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. I said, now, and I said, what do you think this will cost? And then you add a little percentage on it because of inflation and stuff like that. Say, count the cost. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? Count the cost mm-hmm. before you build the tower. So I knew what I was getting into. Right. But what was greater than that, I knew God had authored it. So why, to such a point that it blew away the, um, uh, the contract. Okay. He's such a wonderful man. Yeah. Ray, 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 Ray Chronic. Chronic. If you know Ray. Love it, him. Oh, he's a blessing to God. First thing, I, I like artwork. If you come to Jesse Plants Ministries here in the New Orleans area, when you come through the gates, there's some beautiful bronzes of uh, 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 Jesus washing Peter's feet. And we have bronzes in the foyer, I mean artwork in the foyer of the church and a big globe. And we got all kind of wonderful that. I purchased that before I ever bought any wood, right, sheet before rock, the buildings were built, metal. We and he looked at me like, what? He, I said, Ray, it's already finished. Mm-hmm. See, now that's the difference, because Jesus had authored it. Yeah. That doesn't mean the devil didn't try to stop the finance, yeah. but God had a responsibility to finish this place because he authored it. <laughs> right. I ask you the question, has he authored what you're doing, mm-hmm. spiritual, physical, or financial? Not yeah. being mean here. See, but when I, see, I'm trying to help you explain. You think, why is God letting this happen? He ain't letting it happen. We let a lot of things happen, mm-hmm. but we have to know what is his will. What's the will of God? Right. Well, if you want to know the will of God, write this down. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 2, and the last two chapters in the book of Revelation. Look at my fingers. That's four chapters. Now watch it. When I do this, watch it. Between this is 1186 chapters of killing, stealing, and destroying by an arch enemy called Satan. Right? But Jesus is coming back and redeeming us. And we're going back to Genesis 1. Genesis 2, and the last two chapters of the book of Revelation, and we're going to walk in the cool of the day with God. So, live long and prosper. <laughs> now, that might be a Star yeah. Trek thing, but I actually, that's a, yeah, actually, that's a religious sign. Oh, yeah, a they sign. do both. See, a, a holy thing. Yeah. And that's what Leonard Nimoy used when he, uh, uh, he wanted a greeting for, for, for being a Vulcan yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Now, that's my point. So, it's not because I have any more faith than you. Look, God is no respecter of person <clears throat> and never will be. But he is a respecter of faith. 
He says, according to your faith, yes. so be it. You know, any time that God wants to do something in the earth, I found out in the Bible, he always has a plan. He has a very detailed Amen. plan. He looks for someone that he can relate that plan to. Right. And it's important for us to follow God's and to plan. Hear. And you know, are you, I'll go back to when we were building our headquarters that we're in today. Yeah, I know, uh, 20, over 20 years ago, I oh, think yeah. it was. But anyway, uh, remember, I sat with the architect day by day, and we had a plan. We knew what we were doing, but he kept wanting to add things to right. it, and the price would start to go up. And I said, No, we're not doing that. He says, Oh, but the building's crying out for it. I said, Let it cry. Let it cry. Because baby. we <laughs> knew we had, we had a budget to stick to, and we were going to stay right within that because that's what God said. And we, he we heard the voice of the Lord. Mm -hmm. We you wouldn't see what waver I'm over that. None was, and then God began to give us favor like you've never seen. I mean, favor. Who things begin to happen. I'll give you a prime example. We have two staircases in the executive offices, and I call them the private staircase where you come up the, uh, the back. Well, we wanted to put something nice on the floor. Okay. Oh, some kind of a tile or something like that. Well, the tile costs money. Well, they sent us the wrong tile. Just, for, for another portion. Yeah. Right. In other words, they said, uh, I said, this is not the right tile. Now, watch this. Now, that probably cost $4,500. You know what I'm saying? That ain't counting laying it. That's just and the material. It was ceramic tile, so it was yeah. very heavy. It was very heavy. So watch this. So we told people, said, this is the wrong tile. The serial, I call it a serial number. They, they call it a lot number. They said, we did send you the wrong one. You're supposed to have lot such and such, which it looked alike, but one was dull oh, that's and the right. other the was shiny. Oh, that's right. The hallway has a gloss. Yeah, you don't remember that. I knew now. See, I paid for everything, so I remember <laughs> it all. But, anyways, but the stairwell <laughs> now has a little matte finish. Yeah, it's no, a yeah, yeah, but it's, the same it's color. Kinda, yeah, but here's the whole thing. So we called. Well, Ray called, uh, called, and I'm standing right there. Now, watch this. We didn't. Have, the man says, well, it's, it's going to cost me more money to ship it back on a truck. Well, what's that got to do with me? It ain't got nothing to do with me. I want the, the one I want for the aisle. But see, now we was thinking about maybe putting some carpet in there. Nobody going to see that. He said, well, if you don't mind, just keep it. We said, okay. yeah, we'll keep it. <laughs> so in those uh, uh, stairwells are some very expensive tiles. See, now that was favor. I said, no. We, I said, you sure you don't? No, no. He said, it cost me more money to ship it back. I think it came out of somewhere in Georgia or somewhere or something like that. And he said, just keep it. So God did both of the stairwells for nothing. Except you see my labor. Point? We did have, well, we yeah, we had labor, anyway. but we I'm talking about the cost. Anyway. Of it. It, was, it was just amazing. Now, reason why that happened, well, because but Jesse got faith? No, because he authored this place and he had a responsibility to finish it. Right. You see what I'm trying to say? And that actually, Jesse, was part of our harvest because we're oh, regularly yeah. sowing, sowing seed, seed into other ministries. Our All ministry the time. is always given well over 10%, sometimes many years, 20%. That's right. As the Lord leads yeah. us to help other ministries because oh, yeah. we believe in that principle you, you, of sowing and reaping. I'll give you an example. If, if, if you, you know, we might get a lot of phone calls on this one, what I'm about ready to say. If you're a guest speaker at Covenant Church and Kathy's the pastor there, in other words, we'll give you everything that the, the offering, everything, and then we add to it. Now, I don't care if they gave a huge offering. We still add to it. Why? The church, the ministry gives. Because not only, I think, should people give, but the church as an entity, I think, should too. So that's why we've never struggled. Because, see, I know when God tells me to do something that he authored this. And if he authored it, then he's going to finish it when I went on television. Now, television is a money-eating monster. It don't eat a slice of pizza. It eats the pizza truck. <laughs> I mean, it's talking money. I mean, you have to negotiate. In fact, we were negotiating some things. And I mean, uh, Airtime, was it yesterday? I think it was. Mm -hmm. And got some great, and George was doing a great job on that. To make a long story short, I mean, it, it goes real fast, you see. Mm -hmm. Yet, God had us at the right place at the right time. At, at just doing the right thing. I mean, just one Christian network cost me $2 million a year. You know how many networks I'm on? $2 million a year. I mean, just that. So you figure $2 million. Well, divide 12 into $2 million, and that's how much money you paid every month. Just that one. You see what I'm saying? There was some, uh, uh, was it? I don't know, a few years back. I mean, I was on television in Los Angeles, New York, and it was $50,000 for a 30-minute program. One run times four because you got four weeks in a month. Times 52. You figure it out. Now, I mean, you may understand why sometimes ministers really push hard for money because they're struggling, but we never, we don't push. We ask people if you want to be a partner, be a partner. And if you want to be a partner now, you can become a partner. That's up to you. You see what I'm saying? But we know, not believe, we know in whom we have believed that he authored and finished. So when God tells me to do something, 
I'll run it by Kathy. I said, I feel the Lord telling me to do this. And she said, I do too. And a lot of times we get it at the same time and we may be in two different places, you see. And if we don't, then we pray about it again. Oh, we don't yes, move I, until we both we, have no, a peace. No, we it. can't do that because we only say what he says and only do what he tells us to do. Because he's the author and finisher and of our faith. And <laughs> I honestly believe this. I, my mother's in heaven today and uh, that woman... <laughs> <laughs> drove me crazy. Let me just say, as a kid growing up, mom was on my case constantly all the time. And I probably deserved every bit of it. But I always want to know what I want to do. And I would say, uh, you, you can't do it. I said, mama, that, that belongs to me. My granddaughter is a lot like me when my daughter Jody says, Mary, what are you doing? She said, now, mama, you're getting into my business. <laughs> She's 12 years old. Now, what a 12-year-old business they got, you know? But I can understand that when you're a parent <laughs> and things like that. But I honestly believe this, that I really believe that my mama pushes Jesus, said, what's that boy doing? What is he doing? Can I look a little bit? Now, you can't prove it's true and I can't prove it's not, but there's so great a cloud of witness. Sometimes yeah. I think the Lord will just pull back the curtain and say, look at that. Now, you know, uh, I asked the Lord about this several years ago, uh, and I mean just recently because my oldest brother just recently passed and went home to be with the Lord. I said, you know, when you get to heaven, you're going to be with a lot of people. You had a lot of arguments on the earth. Think about that. You know I mean? They say, but you know, that kind of stuff. And I said, you know, what about that? What about that kind of stuff? And the Lord said, I only allow you to remember the good things. See, there's no badness. There's not anything going to make you sad. You follow what I'm trying to say? So you would say, boy, when you get to see, see someone, you remember that time we did this? It's going to be a wonderful thing. Praise God. And a lot of, quote, bad things turned out, worked out the way you was able to do some good things with it, you know, yeah. things of that nature. Well, I remember when you were doing a lot of bad things. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> before we were born, you were born oh, again. Oh, before I was born again. And, oh, yeah. But the Lord let me know in my heart, I had a grace for it, I guess, that the only reason you were doing that is because of the influence of the devil that was in the earth that was influencing your life. And i got to give you a and little that, honor. You didn't have nobody around you to teach this Bible. <laughs> We were traveling. Well, I had the Holy Ghost. Yeah, the Holy Ghost <laughs> and a Gideon Bible. That was about it. I'm telling you. But yet, I mean, I did a lot of bad things. And I didn't think they were bad. I just did what I wanted to do. I drank when I wanted to drink. I cussed when I wanted to cuss. I didn't care if I was in public. Now, people say, well, but just he'll pray in public. He'll shout in public. Well, if I cussed in public, why can't I pray in public? Sure. I mean, if I could give Satan glory, why can't I give my Heavenly Father glory? I'm not embarrassed about that. When I go, to, I pray over my food when I'm in a restaurant. I don't care if people listen. And sometimes it's so funny. So I, just like, I don't do it on purpose. Sometimes there's somebody like this, and I guess they forgot to pray over their food. And they're about ready to take a bite of something. I go, oh, Lord Jesus. They go, oh. <laughs> I don't even know who these people are about it. And, uh, and, 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 but, you know, that's that kind of stuff. And, and why? Because I'm very proud to exemplify Jesus Christ. To honor him. And to honor him, mm -hmm. see. So when people come and they want to criticize me because something is beautiful in the office or whatever, instead of going, well, try to make an excuse for it, I make no excuses for the blessing of God in my life, and I never will. I say, look what the Lord had done. Yes, it's marvelous. You know marvelous. that little song we used to sing? Look what the Lord had done. Remember that? <laughs> I and love I, it. Yeah, and he healed my body. He my, yeah, one of them shouting kind, you know. <laughs> and I like that, see. He saved me just in time. Just in time. I mean, it's a great <laughs> song. But see, he, what we do, if you want to be a success in life, spiritually, physically, and financially, you have to let Jesus Christ author the things in your life. You want a good marriage? You let him author that. That doesn't mean that me and Kathy hasn't had our... Uh, uh, fits, I guess you could say, or spats, or whatever you call it. But they didn't develop disagreements. The disagreements. But you know what? All we had to do is take the diss off. Mm -hmm. And it became an agreement. And let's just face it, marriage sometimes, you got to give up sometimes. Now, now, my ideas are better than Kathy's. They just are. I say it this now, way. Now, I'm going to no, say it. Let no, me say it. Let me let me, you can interrupt the man. My ideas are better than her. And you know why? Because I thought of them. Her ideas are better than mine. You know why? Because she thought of them. Interrupt me. Well, it's not an interruption now. <laughs> Did my, I say it all? It's called a turn. <laughs> anyway, a all turn. I meant to say was that, you know, sometimes you just have to choose your battles. I guess just now I chose my battle. <laughs> but you see, naturally, if you think of something, you think, my God, how many times you preachers been, you hear somebody else preaching and say, boy, just give me the mic. You're messing all this up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because your ideas are better than anybody else's. Because you thought of it. They may not be, but they are. And vice versa. Now, I one thing, me and I'm gonna just give you a little secret by Jesse and Kathy the Plant. 
I was raised very poor. We didn't have nothing. You understand? So I we never didn't know have, what he's we, say we never had anything that. hanging on the walls. We, know we had plastic here. curtains. <laughs> you ever had plastic curtains? I did. You had them? You had we them? did. Yeah. There was a season when we really had a rough time at home. Oh, we yeah. I mean, rent, we went we little small rent houses from one to the yeah. other and moved around a lot. And uh, I, li I was raised up mostly in mobile homes and trailers. Well, watch this. So we didn't have that. So as the Lord began to bless that, we got born again. And we traveled all over the world. I was a rocker for many, many years. I began to notice nice things, you know. Never had any of it, just began to notice, you know. What is that? What is that? Oh, that's pretty, you know. And uh, Kathy's always been a good decorator, even when she didn't have nothing. You know I mean? She, she knows how to put things together. I, I got, never, I got I never, style. Yeah, a little style. <laughs> I got skills. Yeah. Glory to God. <laughs> now, I never, because most men don't get involved in that, you know. They, they're looking at their shotgun, you know, or something like that, you know, or their car or truck or whatever. Well, I got really interested in decoration. I never thought I ever would in my entire life. So you we, shared my interest. I shared her interest, but it got <laughs> to a point now. She said, now, just I put this together, and I said, that don't look good. What do you mean it don't look good? I said, I see it different. What do you mean you see it different? <laughs> so I move it around. We had a discussion this morning a, at our kitchen table. She a said, loud discussion. Did you? No, yes, it, was it wasn't a, that loud. Not, not that I thought loud. you were talking about a different time. Yes, Today no. it wasn't loud. Well, no, it wasn't loud. <laughs> and she wanted to put some mats or something like that. And I thought, you know, Place why mats. don't you do this? And, you know, before, and sometimes we, I got, I thought, well, you, and, now, this way I go wrong. I said, well, if you want it to look like trash, just leave it like that. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Now we got a problem. You know, and then you she'll say, through on she that said, one. you don't know ugly when you see it. <laughs> and sometimes I say, well, I'm looking at you, and that's an ugly thing you said. You know, that kind of craziness. But, you know, then we bust out laughing. Mm -hmm. You see, because see, some of y'all, it happens especially when you're in traffic. See, because some of y'all, y'all got your fuse hanging out your window. And just waiting for somebody to just light it. <laughs> they pull in front of you. What did he do? You know, those kind of things. You see, when actually you just stop that. One time, that wasn't too long ago, uh, we work a lot. I mean, we constantly, even when the office is closed, me and Kathy are working. Mm -hmm. Well, we had a Saturday off, and I wanted to go downtown when you could go to a restaurant, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not worry about a face mask and all that kind of crazy stuff. And we started getting in, and it was something about the ministry. We started to argue. And I said, stop. And she looked at me like, what are you saying to me? I said, stop. This problem is not going away. It's going to be at the office Monday. But today we got a day off. So we're going to have a nice time. Now, Kathy, yeah. what do you want to do? And she went, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And she, but I stopped. And there's been times I wanted to argue with her about something. And she stopped it. Because it ain't going to go away. I said, well, we'll handle that Monday. Here we got a day of... Well, we can enjoy ourselves yeah, and have a little peace. Sometimes correction comes, from, or the suggestion comes from right. you. Sometimes it comes from me, but just so someone suggests it, that's what counts. Well, let me give you a word of knowledge here uh, from a man to a woman. Listen to me. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I'm I know listening. What, um, you're listening. <laughs> See, you got to watch a woman. See, because they're really funny about their person. They want to look good. Some men could care less how they look, you know, all that kind of stuff. Can't even dress themselves unless their wife's telling them to do it. But, you know, there's a question there that they'll come at you with. you got to be careful. <laughs> to me, I bought something. They'll say, does this, you like this? Does this make me look fat? Here's a word from God. Don't answer that. You may think it does. You may not think Don't answer it. I said, well, do you like it, Kathy? <laughs> oh, I like He's it. He's learned to deflect. I've learned to deflect. <laughs> I, I, she, I said, oh, I really like it. Well, do you like it? And sometimes I've been kind of honest. I said, well, no. No, that's the wrong word. That, she said, well, why don't you like it? I said, I don't know why I don't like it. Mm -hmm. She said, but it's beautiful. It looks good. I said, it does. That's what you said. But you don't like it. I said, no, I don't like it. Well, why don't you like it? I don't know why I don't like it. I just I don't like it. Well, you should like it. <laughs> well, maybe I should, but I don't like it. So I'll come in and she'll put, I'll put a shirt on. She says, now that shirt's out of style. I said, I don't care. She said, but it's out of style. I said, if I keep it long enough, it's coming back in. <laughs> and she said, are you, you going to walk out this house with that on? I said, watch me, mama. <laughs> it didn't make any difference because I'm not as concerned about my person, I guess, as uh, a woman. is. A lot of men are like that, but every once in a while you want to look good. So sometime I'll come in and, and I think I got a good combination. She said, now that tie does not go with that. Now, I thought it did. And uh, now if I want to keep the peace, go change the tie. But, you know, after a while, I said, I, I, I like it. But it looks like it. It looks, it, 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 the blues don't match. <laughs> they clash. They clash. I said, well, <laughs> keep your eyes closed and you won't see nothing clashing. <laughs> now, that's the wrong thing to say. <laughs> Praise God. You see, so then I have to say, Lord, 
I said, I've asked the Lord. I, I've had the Lord tell me this. Now, you're going to laugh at this. I'm t- he said, just listen to it. I said, Jesus, that's easy for you what to say. What did he say? He said, just listen to it. What was that? He said, listen to it. <laughs> you know? And I said, but, I said, Jesus, you ain't never been married. <laughs> you know, hey, a man got to do what I got to do, you know. But you see, what we do, we come together. And I just decided, okay, like you want to call it choosing a battle? I don't know. You just you decide to walk in that anointing. I'm well, saying, there's a verse of scripture that we've stand on. We've stood yeah, on for years. It says, "Don't let the sun go down on your wrath." Oh, and I love to use. <laughs> I caught her one time, so good. Well, you learned she, it from me. She was mad at me, and I couldn't figure out why would you ever be mad at the apostle of joy? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but she was. So she was, mad, and she wasn't saying nothing to me. Say, so that's all right, man. All of a sudden, I noticed the sun. I went. And I did it kind of, I shouldn't have done it that loud, but I kind of put a roughness in my voice. I went, Kathy, oh, that makes it worse. What? I said, sun going down. Come on, baby. Come on. Apologize. Sun going down. Don't let the sun go down the rest. Come on. Come on. And she goes, I said, come on. It's almost down. Kathy, it's almost down. (laughs) And finally she goes, I'm sorry. And then I said, I pardon you. <laughs> oh, Lord, it started up again. Praise God. I thought it was funny. She did not think it was funny. But I got over it. I said, look, it was just, you know, but it's a good scripture to remember. Yes. It's a, really a great if scripture. You, especially if you deliver it better than that. Yes, yes. You know, you got to learn. It. It's called taste. And it's pie. a joke. He thinks he has to joke all the time, and I tell him you don't. But. Well, I mean, it, but it sure has made 50 years of marriage pretty nice. Hasn't it, it has. It has. <laughs> now, how do you know the author and finisher of your faith? How do you know? Mm-hmm. Now, that's Hebrews 12, Hebrews 11. Now, faith, through faith, by faith, and without faith. Mm-hmm. Why do you talk about faith so much? Because it's the only thing that pleases God. Mm-hmm. Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is. Hebrews 11, 2, through faith. Hebrews 11, uh, uh, verse 3, verse 4, by faith. Mm -hmm. And then verse 6, without faith. So everything you do is done by faith. Faith is the thread of the fabric of God's clothes. You see the shirt here? This thing is made up of thread. Mm -hmm. But when they put it together, someone has got to author this thing. Someone has to create this thing. But it starts off with a a yarn, I guess. Yeah, it starts off with a vision. It starts off with a vision, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yarn, they put it together, and then they make a shirt. Now, if you're really proud of it, they put their name on it. Yeah. And if they really put their name on it, then it costs more. You see what I'm trying to say? Instead of saying made in Japan or made in China or made in Vietnam, we get a lot of stuff in America or made in America. <laughs> I used to have some but labels. But if you say Louis Vuitton, people immediately know <laughs> that shirt costs some money. Or I used to buy Burberry, these, huh? I yeah. used to buy these little labels that said handmade by Catherine. That's right. One of the things that I sold, I like a good to seamstress. put those in the back. Yeah, she, she, Kathy can actually sew. I so mean, they make all those very things. Good. Put she your name on it. Stuff. I could hear them. In the, 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 and then she quit sewing for about 20 years. Just shut her down. Then she got this thought, I want this real nice machine. Now, that machine costs a chunk of change. She ain't hardly used it. But you know what? That's okay. I've used it for alterations. Remember, I cut, you know, he wears these awful pajamas. <laughs> I love and, my pajamas. Uh, so, but he doesn't like to wear them long. He likes to wear them short, I right buy, above the and knee. And I cut so the legs off. I cut the legs off. Oh, you off. cut them off. Yeah, I do. And I sew him so it doesn't rag all over the place. So when people come over, she said, you're going to change your clothes? This is mine. Because he kept I doing that. So what I did was I bought like 10 of them, all the same color, all the same, same pattern. Yeah. You don't even know I when I. not. I'm he like He doesn't God. even know when I grab them and throw them away and put a new pair just <laughs> like it in there. He just, I don't know. It just goes right over there. It's just and, one of my secrets. And she said something the other day. I thought it was so funny, you know. I come walking in. We always got somebody delivering something. I mean, Kathy's an online shopping. I'm just like my between, fingers. Yeah, she's just doing this stuff like that. And she got some money the other day as an inheritor to her father. This was so funny to me. I busted out laughing. I had to laugh on that. I know so I come walking in and I said, well. Kathy, and she goes, what? Now, I mean, I'm seeing some boxes of stuff. Kathy buys some pretty expensive things, but that's fine. I don't have no problem with that. Most of it's for the house. If, uh, you don't even know that. I'm getting the uh, chips yeah. and the Well, the no, Nutella. I'm talking about the, yeah. You like Nutella? I like Nutella. That stuff's crackers. good. You know, Nutella. <laughs> anyway, to make a long story short, she says, uh, I Pickles. said, hey, Kathy, how much money have you spent on your hair? And she said, oh, I hadn't spent a dime. I'm just spending yours. <laughs> Now, what's wrong I with said, that picture? I said that. <laughs> what's wrong with he said, Wait, what are you spending that, mine? What about that dress you bought or that jacket you bought? Yeah. I said, well, that, you bought that. I, you bought that's your jacket. <laughs> you said for better or for worse. It's worse right now. Just, 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 no, she ain't touched any of her there. Well, I'm looking that's for okay. I'm going to wait till I can shop and buy something significant, special, maybe something for the home that I can so remember. You're gonna, I don't wanna, so you're going to spend my money nic- while you're doing that? I don't want a nickel and dime it. I want one <laughs> or two objects that I could put in the home or something. So you're going to spend my money while you're waiting on that? Actually, I think it's our money. That's really true. It is our money. I praise the Lord.
Lord. So it's a blessing. See, so that's how we get along. We don't, we hardly ever fight. But sometimes we have very quiet discussions. <laughs> Nothing's being said. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm honest. You know what I told mm -hmm. Jesse? I didn't deceive you. I was this way before you married me. So you got what that's you true. Said. You got uh, what you that's asked true. for. And that was fine. I mean, we know we've had our ups and downs, but I'm going to say 99.9 .9 of it's been up. And maybe one yes. percent, but down. The only bad about the down part, you normally remember that one more than you remember the ups, and that's that's that that's the. It's, and every once in a while, you know, Kathy I just Kathy don't cook at all, and that's okay. It's just me and her. She said I'm delivered you from don't the bondage. Cook either. Well, I'm not me, supposed to. A lot to cook. of men. Cook. I buy the groceries. <laughs> yeah. No, so, actually, I do. Yeah, yeah, with my money. <laughs> but, but anyway, so watch this. You know, all of a sudden she'll all just sit there and she'll say, "I'm cooking something." I thought, my God, we need to get the TV people over here and video this, or oh, this is going to be something. Now, she can cook, you know, and that's fine, you know. Me, I have traveled so much that I just go out. I usually go out and eat lunch or go out and eat dinner. I just, it's a normal thing. I just do that, you know. And she'll come and she'll say, do you want me to cook something? No. Finally, I say, okay, what you going to do? She said, you want me to make you a salad? Making a salad is not cooking. Oh, <laughs> you know? when you do it like I do, it does. What do you, what, what? Oh, I, I, ground, I cook the bacon and I... Well, uh, you know, I don't eat the bacon. You well, don't want to eat I, the bacon. The salad that I cook is really good. <laughs> she likes it her I way. I shred yeah. the eggs and I put lots of things in. Mix the dressing I in the have, bowl and then put it we in. We have a housekeeper and I, really I have a... I said, boil me eggs. I like a boiled egg. And Kathy go in and take my boiled egg and cut them up and put it in a salad. I said, you're eating my eggs. I didn't she think said, you everything thought. you have belongs to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you know, so I, even I would tell Lorna sometimes, I said, make her own eggs. You'll get you over there. You know, but now it's all in one pot. Author and finisher. Author and finisher. See? So she'll author something. She's under responsibility to finish it. I author something. I'm under responsibility to finish it. God authors something. Mm -hmm. He's under the responsibility to finish it. Now. I feel this in my spirit to say this. Some of you are having a little marriage trouble. And the reason, and the reason why, because you're letting small things become big things. Mm -hmm. And you know God authored your marriage. And you're a little irritated about it. So now, God is under responsibility to finish it, but so are you. Mm -hmm. See? You know, and I'm not, not everybody. You've got to understand when God marries people, you still have your same spirit. You still have the way you think. But you learn to work together with those things. You see what I'm saying? And you work together with those things all the time, not some of the time. And some things Kathy chooses to do. I ain't that crazy about it, but that's all right. You know, we go along with, not that it's bad or anything, and vice versa. She'll say, okay, if that's what you want to do, yeah. You really want to do it? Now, she says, what I do, I'll ask her several times. You sure you want to do that? <laughs> well, it means I don't want to do that. No, well, you sure. ask a question, and right. then I give you the answer, then a few minutes later, you and ask it's the true. same question. So I'm thinking, you must not like that first answer. And it it's like, where are we going to eat? And I'll tell you. And yeah, but it's amazing. Like once we, I, I, I submit, <laughs> like they say, you know, I find out, you know, she was right. She, you know, she was right. You know, I mean, just go ahead and do it that way, you know, whatever. And uh, uh, so it just works. See, this is very, very important that everything you do has to be authored by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. I be it when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you in how much truth? All truth. All truth. Didn't say some truth, did he? Mm -hmm. All truth. I hope you're getting something out of this. We're having a little fun here playing. And uh, see, these testimonies, you know, all this playing around creates sometimes testimonies like this. Can I read another Yeah, one? you're welcome to do that. I mean, and people be in touch because, I mean, people are having problems out there. At my ministry, if you come around me, you're never going to see sad, sick, disgusted, broke, busted. We, we're going to get rid of your depression, your despondency, all that stuff because of the Word of God. I really like this one from Robert. From Robert? You, you may not, but I like okay, it. Okay, say it. <laughs> Robert, hi, Pastor Jesse and Kathy Duplantis. Loving all the videos on YouTube. I use YouTube as my main source of social media and television. And I was always saying, how come Jesse doesn't have more videos on YouTube? Glad to see you're there much more. And I love when Kathy talks about the Word of God from her viewpoint. She always has something great to add. <laughs> <laughs> Thank she, you, Robert. She, yeah, she picks all the... Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> such a, well, I didn't even know what YouTube was about. You know, when I'm, I, I mean, I'm not what I call a social media guy, you know what I mean? But I understand it. 
But I mean, now we're on a bunch of these different yeah. platforms. And I mean, some of them sound like you're speaking in tongues, Roku and, <laughs> and all kinds of crazy stuff. I don't even know what yeah. any of that stuff is. You got yeah, another don't, one? Don't try to. Do I'm not going to try okay, it. This is from it. Inga. It says, What's her name? Inga. Inga? I N G A. That's a good name. I like, I like that. that name. It says, My friend Sandy told me you were coming to Albuquerque and yeah. we went to see you preach. I'm so glad I did because ever since then, I started watching you on YouTube and Facebook and it has brought so much faith peace and joy to my life. It has been so perfect, particularly during this COVID thing. I agree with the lady that says she doesn't watch the news, she watches you. So do I. The Lord is really blessing me through you and Kathy, and I just wanted to say thank you. Well, you know, I appreciate her saying that. Inga, listen to this. Yeah. You know, you know we, life throws you, life's a baseball game. Hmm. It's made of curbs, sliders, fastballs. <laughs> and sometimes you get hit by the ball, and sometimes you got to run around the base. Sometimes you get you strike out. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get thrown out. What's all those the kind one of things. that goes behind the base? What is it called? Foul ball. That's a foul ball. Those kind of things goes off, and it can, it can foul also out mm -hmm. uh, in left field or right field. But the whole thing is this: and when you come to my meetings, I figure people have got enough bad news all week long. Why do you need it at church? Mm. You know how many times you've had a tough night, and then you get up, and <laughs> my God, the pastor get up and say, "I tell you what, we've been having a tough time." You think? Good God, I, this is the day, it's supposed to be a day of rest. No, I preach you good news. That's what the gospel's called. The good news. That doesn't mean there's not bad news out there. But when you know who authored and finished it, it's going to turn out right. Not some of the time, all the time. Mm -hmm. So I hope you enjoyed this little segment because you do it th now faith, through faith, and by faith, and without faith. So everything you do in life has a blueprint to it. God's got your life. He knew it. Before. He said he knew you in the womb. Actually, he knew us before the womb. Actually, when Jesus died mm -hmm. was not when he, uh, at Calvary 2,000 years ago. He was a lamb led to the slaughter before the foundations of the earth. For any of this was ever created, Jesus said, I'm going to make a way mm -hmm. for mankind. Yes, he I'm going to create a species plan. that's going to look like me, and I'm going to give them dominion like me. Mm -hmm. And they're going to mess up, but I'm going to send a savior. Think about that. Isn't that a blessing of God? So all throughout junk, Jesus made a way where there was no way. Uh -huh. Remember that song, Just Jesus like made a song. way when there was no way? I, I love, love that song. That. And when you understand that, see, and he's authored your life, mm -hmm. and he will finish it. And you know what? I, I'll say this, and then we'll close out here. I, I went to a funeral. Oh, it must have been eight, ten years ago, something like that. A wonderful man here in New Orleans. His name was Pastor Paul Ratke Sr. Remember mm -hmm. that? That's right. I mean, he, he was so ahead. He was Such the first, a visionary. He visionary. was a visionary. Mm -hmm. He's the first person on television, I believe, here in, in, the, in the New Orleans area. I mean, he had governors and people that, the governor, he knew everybody. He was a true soldier. But there was a great guy, and he's, he pastors up in Shreveport, Denny Duran. I mean, if, if you ever get a chance to go to Denny's church, you ought to go. It's a, it's a phenomenal place. I mean, it's mm -hmm. in Shreveport, Louisiana. Yeah. Make a long story short. I saw Denny. He came to Brother Ratke's um, funeral. A funeral. Service. You know, wait. If we, so to make a long story short, uh, Chip Ratke, his son, asked me to say something, asked Denny to say something. Mm -hmm. And I love what Denny said, and I never forgot it. And to his credit, he got up. He said, I love to go to funerals to see how great men finish. And when he said that, Kathy, that went off inside of me. Mm -hmm. You see, Brother Rack, his life, God authored it and finished it. Yeah. But the way Denny said that, I've never forgotten that. Yeah, it's a great I like, men yeah, I like well to go to great men finished. to see how they finished. Mm -hmm. And I thought, yeah. And you could hear the Apostle Paul, I fought a good fight. Yeah. I finished my course. Yeah. I kept the faith. Right. Now, if there's such a thing as a good death, that was one. That's true. Because where there's life, there's death. It's going to happen until Jesus comes, you know what I'm saying? But I'll never forget that when Denny said that. I want to see how great men finish. Mm -hmm. In other words, all of us are designed to finish. And you know what? I really believe you'll finish greatly if you realize that Jesus is the author and finisher of your faith. That's right. And he will never leave you and never forsake you. Let's pray for him right now. Amen. Can we do that? Father, yes, thank you, hands. Lord. Yes. Minister healing where people thank need you, to be Lord. healed. Yes. Minister financial help. There's some people need help, Lord. They lost thank their you, jobs. Jesus. And I know the government's doing all they know to do, but that's all borrowed money. That's imaginary money. Somebody got to pay that back. But God, I ask you to Thank restore you, and give favor to Wisdom. people that need help spiritually, yes. physically, financially. I don't care what kind of disease they have, whether it's a virus or cancer. 
everything named bows at the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for thank these you, wonderful Lord. people. Lord, thank you for my partners that helped me do this. Yes. I can't thank them enough. They do it spiritually, physically, financially, every area. Thank you, Lord. And I ask you to bless, bless them. You said if two of us agree, I'm holding Kathy's hand thank here. You, Lord. We She's agree. one, I'm two, God, you three, and the people that are listening, word. it's four, five, thank six, you, could be who knows how many. I thank you for it. I believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. This is Jesse and Kathy, the planet saying we love you. And remember, you will finish good. Yes. See you next time. Bye-bye.